But there are a ton of things that people watching this can implement today and start getting tangible results. And one of those things is you can start running your own funnel, your own sales system by starting your own ad from your phone. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson. I bring you successful entrepreneurs, add valuable wisdom to your journey, and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share, and Prosper. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson, president and founder of Master Networks. I'm joined today by Bryce Vance. He's the founder and CEO of Funnel Driven LLC. And as a lead strategist, web and app development strategist, he's an expert on data-driven behavior. He helps small business owners generate and convert leads as well as develop systems, programs, and tools to level up their business. Bryce's goal is to become the architect of his own life and unlock the superpower he craves the most, living with purpose outside himself. He's discovered that helping people help other people really change the world is his key to success. So help me welcome Bryce Vance to Connect Share Prosper. Welcome. Thanks for having me on, bud. It's good to be here. Yeah. So listen, this is, um, you know, this is an interesting time. I, I, first of all, I love that you focus on data driven behavior. I'm a big data guy as well. I think data drives a lot of things and it's interesting in the time that we're in with COVID-19 and you know, all the decisions that are being made on data. But I, I, I'm one that challenges that we even are on correct data to begin with. Um, Let's say you on a very uh, triggered topic right now. <laughs> so data, data, content, delivery, truth. That's, I mean, it's all spike in influence here. It's all spike in curiosity. And you're right. It is, it's polarizing these days. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big data guy solely because of the old cliche. People lie, numbers don't. Right. You can talk all you want, whether you're a business owner, especially in my world, let's be honest here. I run a marketing and app development company. There's about 100,000 of us, maybe 12 of us know what we're doing. The rest of us, for lack of a better term, we're not brought up the proper way. There's a lot of shysty people in my industry. Yeah. So what's the best way to kind of counteract that? Well, use data. Use actual facts, proof, mm -hmm. optimize for the data. Don't just say something, do it. Yeah. And so how does a business owner, like what kind of data are you talking about? You know, so when you, when you talk about your data driven, what are you looking at? What are you tracking? So it's different for every business, uh, but it's always whatever their core KPIs are, their key points of influence, right? Their interests. So some people are really return on ad spend driven. Some people are return on investment driven. Some people are per cart driven. Some people are per visit driven. Some people are more about people in the door or people in their inbox. So it's different per industry, but the real ultimate goal is every dollar you put in makes more than a dollar back, regardless of how that happens. Right, so, and if you do so, that, then your marketing budget's <laughs> limitless, right? If, that, if it's working. Yeah, the whole point's to scale. Like it, yeah. our name's funnel driven and our yeah. site's driven ROI. The purpose for that is we're really trying to help you drive a return on any investment you do because what's the best scalable approach? Well, data-driven solutions that have an impact in your community and can help you get market share. Awesome. So before we go much further on the path of this, I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork for what you do. Let's go back to the beginning. How'd you get involved in this? Why was this the path you took uh, to, you know, drive data through funnels and, and return on investment and track that? Uh, so it's a messy story, but <laughs> it's uh so it's, it's funny. I love talking about this. I actually have a book coming out titles pending right now that actually goes over all of this. And I'll be sure to send you the information when yeah, it's there so you too. can give it out. Uh, but it's, so I, I like to call myself a prolific up historically. Okay. Uh, it made a lot of mistakes. I was the, I was your typical rebellious teen, went through the whole like scene and emo phase to the heavy rocker phase to the just, I didn't care about anything phase. And then like that, it's so destructive on your life, right? Mm. Like that lifestyle, super destructive. So I started getting my stuff together right about college, right? But I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I started as a performing arts major at BSU. Quickly learned I was going to be poor for the rest of my life if I relied on playing guitar for a living. So switched it to macroeconomics with international business and advertising as a minor. 
Okay. So started in college with advertising. Started playing around with it, started getting in some networking groups, made some friends, some acquaintances, started working as a contractor for a couple companies. And then I opened my first business myself after going from job to job to job to job in 2014. That story in and of itself will take half an hour to an hour alone. It's in the book, so I'll let you guys absorb that. But the experiences through that company, my first brick and mortar, bootstrapped it from the ground up. I really had to kind of take everything that I learned in school, all the resources from the employers and the, the opportunities they had and put it together and figure out how to make it work. And then as things started progressing and data was coming in and I was seeing results and I was able to reinvest and was able to learn more, I just started investing more and more into education, into coaches, into mm. trainings, into modules. I've done Frank Kern. I've done Billy oh, Jean. Yeah. I've done Grant Cardone. I've done Ryan Stuman. I've done pretty much everybody that has influence in that space at some point, right? And got to the point where like really, <coughs> really I became who I was looking up to, right? And to the point where people were reaching out to me and asking for it. And then I did that for a little while. I think it was like, I think it was like one or two years where I was doing it for myself and other people just to help them out. And then life lifed and mid 2017 lost everything. Mm. Uh, lost the relationship, lost the kid that I was adopting, lost the house, lost oh. the possessions, a disaster of a year, right? And didn't really know where I was going, but I knew what made me happy. And what made me happy was helping other people make change, right? That's what made me happy. And I was like, well, what, what do I know how to do that can do that? And immediately it was advertising and marketing and business growth, right? That's what I loved doing. I did it whether I got paid or not. So it's like, well, let's do that for a living. So <laughs> I started, I think it was like April. I started coming up with the ideas to do it. June, I think we started our first, like, putting together things for a company. October 1st to 17, we established Funnel Group. And I had left my association. When you say we, companies. when you say we, was it more than you? So I'm sole owner of the company, uh, but it was, it was a conversation between family and a couple friends who, who really have the same, like, vision of just leaving okay. a legacy, helping, helping change where change needs. So it was, I was influenced a lot by people around me. Right. Mm. And, and for the better, I mean, there are people that helped me get to where I am today. There are people that helped me change what I constitute as the old me into the new me, right? They helped me get through those dark times in my life, the mid 2017s, all that. So <laughs> they were like the, they were like my rock at the time, right? And so I was bouncing ideas back and forth off of them. So start the company October 1st, 17. And then I think within like, if I remember correctly, I had $14 in my pocket and $57,000 worth of debt at that time when I started the company. And I think within like the first week, we signed our first client. Well, good for you. By the and... way, your story, your story is similar. <laughs> I tell the story in my book about having $27 in my bank account when I started this company. Yeah. Uh, I have three children, I have five children, three in diapers at the time and $27. I could barely buy diapers. So I know the, I know the situation. Well, <laughs> I know the, the feeling, the, the urgency that that creates for you to have to go make something happen. So I, I can relate to that piece of it. So you get this thing started and you get a sale right out of the gate. Um, did it sort of keep that same momentum or did you like, Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> we all like to, we all like to romanticize that it starts fast and just takes off. Right. Yeah. And while it didn't decline, the momentum didn't, it wasn't just an upward trajectory. Sure. Right? We sure. had, we had the full roller coaster up, down, sideways, backwards at the full trajectory. The biggest hit was, and this is something I think all small businesses can relate to or at least to some extent, was in 2019, we had our first friendly fraud instance. 2018, our first friendly fraud instance. Tell me a client mean. from, so friendly fraud's chargeback fraud. A client yeah. purchases a product or service, they get the product service, right. they benefit from the product service, and then they fraudulently claim that they have no idea who you are. Right. We had our first instance of that. And it wasn't a small instance, right? Our average ticket items, I think four to 6,000. 
And this client was a client for like eight months. Wow. Phenomenal results for this client, right? Like we built locations with them, flew out, did videos, did commercials. And it was like six months after the fact, they hit us for like 47 grand just right away. And it was my first instance with having to deal with that type of chargeback, right? Yeah. Did you get shut so, down? Did <laughs> merchant, merchant providers shut you down? Merchant services shut me down. I was using Stripe at the time. So they mm. were like, what the hell's going on? They stopped me right away. Uh, but I think that was one of the most pivotal lessons that I've learned throughout my experience. And one that really resonates back to why data-driven results are so important. Yep. Without the data that I had used to drive their growth and results, and we keep a copy of it, we probably would have been out of business because our operating account got hit for 50 grand in a day. Mm, yeah. right? So we had to come up with how to cover that. Plus, we already pay our employees and our overhead, so we were out 50 plus our cost, right? So yes. we had to come up with that. Then we had to find new merchant processing. So we had all these disasters going on, but it came back to the data. We just sent over the data. We sent over numbers, results, screen caps. And while we didn't win all of it back, we did have to go petition and we have a judgment against them to collect the portions that they wrongfully got. We did win about half of them. So it didn't come, it, like it wasn't a full on disaster, but it, it really concretes that idea that whether it be in marketing or business development or market research or product development, anywhere in business, the data is going to be kind of your saving grace at one point or another. Yeah. So we really wanted to focus on what's the one element that we can control, right? We can't control if the client sells a product. We can't control if the client has good operations. We can't control their overhead, their, right, right. their hiring, their firing. We can control the data. We can control what we put out there. We can control what we optimize for. We can control how that reflects. So we focus on that. So, so the million dollar question I think that would come to somebody listening is, <coughs> again, you said thousand the people that do that 12 that know what they're doing what what is the like how do you how do you demonstrate that you know what you're doing versus like again i've got two you know two choices somebody says hey we do we do ad spend we can we can track it for you whatever and then what you guys do do you have do you have uh software do you like why would i choose you well, let me, let me specify what I really mean by that statement. Okay. Because there's, there's more than 12 marketing companies that actually are yeah. good, right? Yeah. That, that's a hypothetical. It's an exaggeration. What I mean is there's, and this is no offense to Russell Brunson or his company ClickFunnels, but that movement, and I use their software. I think the software works great. But that movement he started created a subculture of people that just buy an online course for $1,000 and think they know what they're doing to try and serve a business at four, five, six, ten thousand 10,000 a month. And right. they don't, they right. haven't gone through the exercise. They haven't put For in sure. the time. They don't know what the data is. They don't have tangible history of results. So my biggest thing, whether it be you work with us, you work with one of our competitors, just get proof, testimonials, case studies, results speak for themselves. If somebody asks us if like, why choose us? The answer is, is we do the same thing that a lot of marketing companies do. Identity resolution, SEO, social media, marketing, content creation, web development, app development, and cultivation. A lot of people can do that. What makes us different is we never try and justify that as we are the best. We're the best for some people, but we're not made for everybody. The people right. that we are made for will see a result and they'll, they'll generate a return on that but we prove it with data. It goes back to data. If somebody wants to see what we do, we send them a testimonial or we send them a case study or we send them information. It's all publicly available. If you ask a marketing company, if they can send a testimonial <coughs> or a case study and they tell you no, run. Right, right. Or you're their first client and still maybe you should run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I get it. Yeah. So. So what, what does a business owner right now, especially considering all the, 
you know, social uh, discussions out there right now, the health discussions, all that in, in business, what should business owners be thinking right now? Cause I think for some of them, you know, they were in path this way right now, mm-hmm. all things go and then whoosh, shake it all up. It's all different. What kind of, is there a framework that they should be operating within right now? Is there something you're telling business owners to be considering in their messaging and their content and their ads and, and all of that? Omnipresence. Omnipresence is the biggest key. So what that really means is just be everywhere that your ideal client is. It doesn't mean be everywhere all the time, everywhere. Like if your ideal client is not on TikTok, you don't have to waste a ton of time putting content on TikTok, right? But if your ideal client is, or you're cultivating the future clientele, then yes, have a presence, right? Mm-hmm. Now I want to, I want to specify this cause it's going to sound like I'm telling you to do like 500 things. I am, but it's not 500 individual things, right? You can take one video that say you record on your smartphone yep. while you're walking through the park or grabbing lunch as a commercial, it could just be you organic content works the best on social media. And then you can take that, send it to rev.com for 25 cents a minute, transcribe it. Now you've got a blog post, a social media post, a social media video. You can then take it and go to Rapper or you can use any of the apps that are on the app store to put on captive transcriptions so it shows the captions. You can take snips of it and now you've got content for 10 different websites, your website, a blog, an article. You can put it out as a press release and you can use services like Hootsuite or Buffer to automate the posting to all of those. So you make one piece of content, spend 10 minutes online on a computer, getting it changed and five minutes uploading it. And now you have omnipresence for that for the day, the week, the month. Mm. And so people tend to, overcom- <coughs> they tend to overcomplicate it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and there's there's two reasons. There's a ton of social media. There's yeah. a ton of websites out there. There's. I think like 1800 social sites that have any active users on it. Right. Mm. There's like five people used. Right. Right. When we're, when we're talking about omnipresence, we're really just talking about being able to communicate with your clients where and when they want to be communicated with. Mm. That's really all we're, that's really, I I think that's the key, right? Where and then the way they want to be communicated with and everyone's trying to take the way they communicate, push it to the, potential clientele and that's not necessarily the way everyone's consuming that content and so understanding that um so i think that's powerful right and i wrote down and we'll put in the rev.com and and wrapper i've both i've used and and i'm aware of both of those so omnipresence is the key right now you guys that that's what you know bryce is discussing is being being visible being especially like you know when covid19 started and people went to quarantine we started doing Facebook lives every single day. And that was huge for us. Uh, We were present for our current clients. And then we started to find out that people were sharing, Hey, if you're a business owner, you need to be on this Facebook live because they're sharing relevant things going on right now and how to adjust. Mm -hmm. And that became big for us. And then of course the data backed it up, right? We went from, I I think our team, our team was doing like, we're doing like, you know, a thousand views in 24 hours to now we're like 14,000 views in 24 hours. You know, it's huge. So well, in talking about that, like it's, I'm glad you brought that up. We've seen on average, our clients have experienced through this pandemic, about a 20 to 30% increase in traffic, a 32% increase in lead generation, and about a 15% increase in appointments mm-hmm. by purely doing more video. Mm. So, but help me understand that. Why? Why? People are home. Where, where, where do people want to communicate? Well, they're stuck at home. They're probably either working part-time laid off, unfortunately, or they've had to relocate to a quarantined remote position. They're consuming more content than ever before because there's nothing else to do except be, be home and be on your device, be on a computer, be on so your phone. So you're saying they're home, they're available, but then video being the other <laughs> component to that, right? Is what you're saying? Video is important because it's engaging. Okay. We all like, we all like to, and just like memes, memes are big and everybody has this controversy and should we, or should we not use memes in a professional setting? The answer is you absolutely should use memes in a professional setting. And here's why it captures attention. 
if the mass of your populace, of the market that you were trying to penetrate and help its consumers with, are captivated by a infographic, make infographics. If your audience is captivated by short videos, make short videos. Mm. It goes back to communicate with how they want to be communicated. Video currently is the most popular. Facebook Live and Facebook groups are the two biggest money makers on social media today. More so than Facebook ads, and we promote Facebook ads. Is that because of algorithms and the way that they, they're pushing it? Or, or why do you think Facebook Live and Facebook groups? There's two reasons for it. One, Facebook's algorithm has a preferential treatment to it. For the Facebook Live specifically, it's their preference on how content is done. It's what they're really trying to engage to. So they treat it better than anything else in their algorithm. Additionally, for Facebook groups, it is the only area where you do not have advertisements. You control what your members see. You are the advertisement. If you cultivate a like-minded community in a Facebook group, when they're in that Facebook group, they don't see an ad for anything. They only see the content that you and the members are putting there. If you've got like-minded community Smart. and you're providing yep. value, yep. you control what that ad is. Yeah. I think for the solopreneur, the challenge is, and this is probably where you guys come in, is you know, I'm busy all day selling my product. I don't have the time to do all this social media stuff, right? Because I'm busy and I'm doing all this stuff. So, you know, how do, is that something you guys, you, you pick up the pieces for them or you, or do they have to create the social media and you guys just enhance it from there? So we, we do done for you solutions. We do done with you solutions as well. Uh, the majority of our clients are in exactly that situation where they just don't have the time or they don't have the desire to do it and they hire us to handle it. Right. Yep. So we make their social, we run their social, we do their ads, we do their posting, we do their organics. We basically become them to the internet. Right. <clears throat> and that's kind of the most powerful solution. But there are a ton of things that people watching this can implement today and start getting tangible results. And one of those things is you can start running your own funnel, your own sales system by starting your own ad from your phone. Yep. So if, if you go to www.drivenroi.com, everybody watching this can get a free PDF download and it's called the one funnel that works. It's a client acquisition funnel. I think it's about seven pages, but it goes through everything from how to set up your Facebook to how to set up your ad to why the content works, to how to set up a landing page, to how to connect them just outlined for you guys. Great. Now in that, I specify that it's something you can do right away. And I'm going to go back to an earlier statement. You remember when I mentioned buffer and wrapper? Yes. Buffer and wrapper, you can spend, say, Sunday with the family, spend two hours, shoot a few videos, take a few pictures, take a few notes, and you can have content for the whole week automatically. You just upload it to buffer, schedule the time you want it to post, schedule how you want it to be posted, where you want it to be done, and then it's hands off. Yep. So it's just, the, it, it's creating it as a priority and understanding this is a, this is the way business is done now and you need to be there. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't push it off any longer and say, I don't do social media, right? If you're in business, that's where your clients are. That's where their mm -hmm. eyeballs are. I mean, it used to be TV, radio, newspaper. Well, now it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, wherever they are, that's where they, you need to be. Um, you need to make that. Um, so, I mean, very valuable information that you shared. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how can people find you? How can people connect with you if they're like, Hey, I really resonate with what you're saying. I want to learn more about what you're talking about. Well, you know, for, first off, before I get to that, I'm glad you brought that up. You, you're absolutely right. It's the way business is done today is more digitally driven. And Keller Williams is actually one of my favorite people who quote this. That's his quote. And he said, it's not the real estate agent that uh, it's not technology that's going to replace the real estate agent. It's the, it's real, the real estate, estate agent, agent that adapts to that technology, yep. right? And he calls them tech-enabled agents. Yep. Gary the Keller. reason, yeah, the reason why that's important is because it's showing the adaption of an industry that has been long in the past, advertising-wise, finally making that recognition, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something that's optional anymore. The pandemic's proven that if you do not have good online presence, you're out of business. 
especially sure. if something like this happens. So any anybody that needs to get a hold of me has questions, just want it maybe resonates, just wants to get to know me, chit chat a little, needs help. You can go to Linktree Bryce.phonesites.com. Once again, Linktree Bryce B R Y C E dot phone sites.com and it's got all my contact info. We'll make sure we put that in the show notes. Um, yeah, I mean, you couldn't be more, I, I was talking to my wife, we were considering putting in a pool and we went to a couple of people's websites, even within our network here that we went through our, our system, our app where you can connect with other members and the website, you know, the only way to contact them is to send them an email, like no web form, mm -hmm. nothing links to other sites all over it. And I'm like, I mean, you know, so anyway, you send an email, hear nothing back, leave a voicemail, hear nothing back. I mean, talk about making it difficult for a customer to get a hold of you guys. The web presence needs to make, remove that friction. It needs to make it easy for people to find you, reach out to you, connect with you. And Bryce has shown you a couple of ways to do that and why that's important. So uh, Bryce, thank you for being on this episode, man. Time went really fast on this topic. Uh, it, did, it, did. it went super fast. Um, we'll have to have you back again to talk more in depth. Guys, if you want to reach out to Bryce, make sure you click the link tree link uh, in there to connect with him. And as always, every Monday, noon central, I bring you successful entrepreneurs who share the ups, the downs, you know, their mess that's turned into their message and the things that help them to be successful. So you can learn from the successes, the challenges, the failures, all of that to help you become a better successful entrepreneur, especially in this time and build legacy beyond the business. Till next time, everybody, be well. We'll see you on the next episode of Connect, Share, Prosper.